Senator Jack Reed's amendment addresses a major threat to our national security and the middle class, sequestration. These arbitrary and extreme cuts implemented by sequestration threaten our national security and our domestic prosperity. Sequestration only exists because Republicans refuse to close a single tax loophole during the Ryan um, the, the, the Super Committee. It was uh, Patty Murray and Paul Ryan worked very hard. We, we couldn't get Republicans to close a single tax loophole, not one. And everyone thought it was so stupid when sequestration kicked in, but now the stupid is part of Republican official policy. This is what they like. I have to believe that they think and know that sequester, sequestration is a bad policy. Senator McCain said, and I quote, I think it's unanimous, the view that sequestration is a meat ax. It was never intended to be employed. Close quote. That's John McCain, the same man that is now on the floor touting what a great bill this is. With $39 billion of OCO money or deficit spending. I've talked about this. I continue to talk about it. I can't believe that he's agreeing to this. Unless we deal with the impact of sequestration, middle class Americans will suffer drastic cuts in things like education, job creation, and life saving research. There's no reason to wait to negotiate a bipartisan budget deal. Senator Murray said today it took her and Paul Ryan two and a half months to get where they got when they finally arrived at something that was good. Republicans have decided to go it alone on the appropriations process and move forward with bills they know will be vetoed. No will be vetoed. I think that it's just outrageous what they're doing. So I hope that um, we can have some sanity on the Senate floor and we will vote, all, all Democrats will vote to, for the Reid Amendment. I just hope we can get some Republicans because I cannot imagine how they can agree to move forward with this funding, which is so outlandish and so unfair, and we're dealing with a bill that the President said he's going to veto. Senator Durbin. Thanks, Senator Reid. This morning, and Defense Appropriations Subcommittee reported out an appropriation bill that is based on the same budget gimmick as we're facing on the floor. The Defense Authorization Bill, of course, uses these wartime emergency funds, uh, they believe, in the Authorization Bill and in appropriations to help the Department of Defense. Well, this morning I spoke to a person who knows a lot about the Department of Defense, Secretary Ash Carter, and I asked him about this OCO approach, and he said, I still believe there's no way to construct a budget that this country needs for national security using this budget gimmick of OCO funds. That's the man who has the responsibility of building a budget and keeping America safe. And yet the Republicans continue to pursue this. It's time for us to come to our senses. If we're going to deal with the budget crisis that we face, acknowledge the fact that it goes way beyond the Department of Defense. It really applies to every single agency of government. And also acknowledge something else. Waiting until October, November, or December to finally realize that we need a budget summit with the President, congressional leaders of both parties sitting down and working out a solution is really naive and it really isn't fair to America. Let's take this issue that we're facing today and again probably next week in the appropriation bill as a time for us as a wake-up call for all of us to get down to the business of constructing a realistic budget that is fair not only to our Department of Defense but to many other agencies of government that are critical for national security and the growth of our economy. Thank you. Uh, well, the bill that's on the floor today and the appropriations bill that is following are enough to make any honest accountant blush. Rather than providing our men and women in uniform and their families the real support they deserve, the Republican plan uses budgetary sleight of hand to paper over the military's very real and very urgent budget needs. Any military budgeteer will tell you. You can't do this with a one-shot deal like OCO. 
What about an aircraft carrier that takes four or five years to plan, or even a strategic plan in part of the area of the world, which doesn't go for a year? You talk to both defense contractors and leaders of the military, they say this one-year OCO gives them no comfort because they don't know what's coming next and they can't plan. The plan uses the OCO gimmick in a half-hearted attempt to fund the Defense Department while leaving middle-class families behind. If Republicans were serious about our security, they'd fund DOD with real money and real support. They would also fully fund the Department of Homeland Security. They would fully fund the Justice Department, because national defense isn't just about DOD after all. Instead, Republicans seem content to let across-the-board cuts devastate our ability to keep this country safe, both at home and abroad. Our military has enough real enemies in the world. They shouldn't have to fight with congressional Republicans to get the full funding our men and women in uniform deserve. Democrats have a better plan. Get rid of the OCO budget gimmick, fully fund the men and women in uniform, and fully fund programs here at home the middle class relies on. It's time for Republicans to stop heading down this path that ends in gridlock and disaster for our federal budget, and to start getting serious about a budget deal that allows full funding of the federal government. Every minute the Republicans spend advancing bills at sequester levels is a minute instead that should be spent on hashing out an agreement to avoid the devastating cuts. We know what's going on. They got a hard right wing. They don't know what to do with it. But they know the president isn't going to sign bills that are at their levels. They know we're not going to support those bills. We've made it clear. We're not moving to proceed on any appropriations bill that's at that sequestration level and doesn't equally balance the needs of security at home and abroad, the needs of our soldiers and our families. We strongly urge our colleagues to turn back from the coming funding cliff and work hand in hand with Democrats to find a real solution, not more gimmicks to this looming crisis. And they're going to learn this sooner or later. They're proceeding down the same path they did when they came close to shutting down the government, when they came close to the fiscal cliff. We know they're going to have to back off sooner rather than later for the good of the country. Senator Murray. Um, there, there are a lot of policies in this bill that would help our service members and our national security, which is really why it is such a shame that it assumes a gimmick that will never become real. This uh, should, bill should reflect budget reality. And the reality is that Democrats and many Republicans agree using emergency war spending to fund defense is a gimmick, it creates uncertainty, and is a fake fix to a very real problem. The only real solution is to build on our bipartisan budget deal and roll back the automatic cuts from sequestration across both defense and domestic investments. And until that happens, Republicans are simply pushing us as a nation closer and closer to another round of brinksmanship and avoidable crises. So I join my colleagues in calling on Republicans to support the Reid Amendment that would address this he issue here today. This will not be the last word on sequestration, since we have made it clear that the overall budget levels will need to be addressed before appropriations bills can move. But it is an important issue, and one I hope the Senate will address today. We'll take questions. Uh -huh. As Senator Murray has said, the stellar work that was done by her and Representative Ryan took a long time, took two and a half months. We can't wait till this fall. This matter has to be resolved now. This Republican-led Congress is leading the nation crisis by crisis that they create on their own. There's no reason to have a crisis on these appropriation bills. There's no reason to have a crisis on spending for a highway bill. Uh, there's no reason the XM Bank is going to go dark at the end of this month. They're creating these on their own. These are not new issues. They've been around for a while, but they've blocked them when they were in the majority. 
when they're now they're in the majority. They block them when they're in the minority. Okay. We we are only we're we, we are going to continue to work with them when it's for the good of the country. SGR, I'm glad we got that done. But remember, we would have done it happily the last two Congresses. They wouldn't let us. Trafficking. We would have been happy to do that one of the last two Congresses. They wouldn't let us. Yes, Senator Schumer, I was please. just going to say, you, please, wait come till, on. Oh, come on. you wait till the end, you're going to get a CR, which everyone agrees is a really poor form of budgeting, That's hurts the military, and hurts families, doesn't allow us to do what we need to do. As Harry said, it takes a long time, ask Patty, uh, to, to put one of these things together. We're ready to start right now. Where are they? Playing the same kind of fiscal brinksmanship that the hard right on their side demands. It's not as if it hasn't been done before. Uh, we had the famous uh, summit that took place at Andrews Air Force Base. I think that, as Senator Durbin mentioned here a few minutes ago, it should be congressional leaders, both parties. It should be the White House. Senator Yes. Uh, Governor Sandoval has announced he's not going to run for the Senate. Is that going to make it easier for the Democrats to keep your seat? Um, everyone knows that I've been um, complimentary of Governor Sandoval. I think he's done a good job. I think that statement that he issued this morning early, that he's not running for the Senate, is a good statement. He talks about his reasons for not wanting to run for the Senate, and I understand that. He's a young man, has a very nice family, and he feels at this time he wants to devote his attention to being governor of the state of Nevada. So does that make it easier for the Dems to hold on to that seat? Well, you, you, you guys can take a look at that. We have a, we have a winner in Catherine Cortez Masto. She's a wonderful, long-time Nevadan, in fact, lifetime Nevadan, and it doesn't matter who runs against her. She's going to be just fine. Thank you. That's it. All right. Thanks. That's it. We covered everything. Yeah.